Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today I'm having a look at this from OpenAI. I'm going to pronounce its shape regardless of the actual pronunciation. There it is. What does it do? Well, it generates 3D objects conditioned on text or images. There are some samples. There's a link to the paper up there if you want to go and have a look at all the technical bit. But as you can see there, we've got a chair that looks like an avocado. I seem to remember that prompt from somewhere, but there it is now in 3D, and we've got all those other examples there. Usage install with pip install minus e dot. Okay, that's quite useful. Let's go through the full local install using Anaconda, of course. So with my Anaconda prompt open, I'm just going to copy and paste all those commands that are in the video description, starting with the conda create minus minus name shape or whatever name you want to give it. Python 3.10, there it is. I've already created mine, of course. So I'm going to activate my environment. And then, of course, you carry on just copying and pasting all the commands through. Once you're ready to start, you can just run the Jupyter Notebook command, and that will automatically open up in a new web page for you. The directory you want there is the shape directory, and you'll go into examples. I've copied the examples there to examples underscore nr, just because I like to keep copies of things and work in there. In here, you'll see three notebooks in code, sample image to 3D and sample text to 3D. I'm going to be completely ignoring encode and just focusing on the text and image to 3D. First of all is the text to 3D. Now, this is about a three gig download. It automatically downloads the models for you. With the settings I've got here, a batch size of one, that's going to use about 8.6 gig of VRAM. If you do the nerf as well, you're going to need about 13 gig of VRAM. And then to save it out, you're going to need a little bit more. That goes up to about 10 gig VRAM. I've changed a couple of other settings there. I've got the prompt and amazing spaceship. I've also increased the size from 64 to 192, just so that you can see the nerf. Once you've got everything set up how you want, the easiest thing to do is just do cell and run all. That will go through the entire notebook for you, generate the render and also save the objects. As you can see, we now have a rather cool looking spaceship there, which we can also open up in Blender as well. In Blender, I'm just going to get rid of that default cube. Goodbye, file, import, wavefront OBJ, and then just select that example mesh. There it is, the spaceship. It is, of course, on its side. So we'll also change this to vertex paint so we can see the colors. And there it is. Now we have a really cool spaceship. Obviously, you can't go too wild with your prompt, but it is capable of producing a wide variety of things. The other thing you can do is turn images into 3D. So here I've rendered a picture of a space cow in stable diffusion, and I've also got the remove background extension installed. That way I can just send the picture to extras and remove the background. All you need to do then is change the path to the image, run all cells in the notebook, and then you'll get what it thinks is a good 3D representation of it. Now it's quite small there, obviously in the nerf. So let's have a look at that again in Blender. And there he is next to his original image. As you can see, it's fairly close. It's got a little dot on the chest. It's got his horns. It's not too bad as far as space bulls go. So there you have it. Text to 3D, image to 3D. And why not check out this nerdy rodent video as well?